finally figured out why Luigi is such a coward. Yeah, I always wondered what his deal was. It's childhood trauma. My man's was going through it as a baby. What happened? <laughs> All throughout the Yoshi's Island franchise, he was getting kidnapped left and right. In the original game, the stork's trying to deliver the babies, but Kamek tries to steal them, but only steals baby Luigi. So baby Luigi, oh, yeah. so baby Luigi is kidnapped and held captive. But finally, baby Mario and Yoshi save him, and the stork delivers them to their home. But it's the wrong home. So the stork tries to deliver them again, and they get kidnapped again. Oh. And the same thing happens. Baby Luigi gets kidnapped, and baby Mario gets off free. So that baby yeah. went through it twice. Baby Mario still doesn't do anything as a baby. No. But then they finally get to their parents' home, and Kamek comes back for more, kidnapping all the babies from their houses. Jeez. And baby Mario gets off free, but the one baby that gets stolen and brought back to Bowser's castle is baby Luigi. Jeez. So as a baby, he got kidnapped and tortured three times before he could even speak. He's got to do a lot of mental damage to someone. <laughs> yeah. I don't blame him for being so afraid all the time. Yeah, no one's had really a worse upbringing than Luigi. Maybe Bowser Jr., doesn't have, doesn't have a mom, that's sad. Yeah, has to deal with Bowser all well, day. Well, Cranky Kong, the original Donkey Kong, eventually got captured by Mario after capturing Mario. What? So the whole Donkey Kong, Cranky Kong, Mario Jumpman thing is so confusing from the original games, but Yoshi's Island proves that Donkey Kong and Mario are the same age, which means that it's their parents Cranky Kong and Mario's dad that are in the original Donkey Kong. So it's not even Mario. Right, it's his dad. Jumpman? Jumpman is Mario's dad. So in the movie, when Cranky Kong sees Mario, he recognizes him because he resembles his dad, the person that locked Cranky away in the original Donkey Kong. Does he recognize Mario? I don't he sarcastically that. says, who is this guy? But he already knows. And that's why he made this random challenge for Mario to fight Donkey Kong in the arena to get the army. That resembled the one he and Mario's father went through at one point. Exactly. He put their sons through the same kind of torture. Is it torture or just a trial? <laughs> I don't know if he's trying to torture him. That's fair. You wouldn't want to do that to your own kid. But maybe he just wanted to put Mario through the torture because he thought Donkey Kong was going to beat his ass. Oh, who wins in a fight, Mario or Aang? Ooh, weird, weird comparison there. If it's full force Aang, it's Aang. If it's Avatar Aang, no one's beating that. If Mario can get power-ups though? Only if Mario has the star, otherwise Aang. I don't know, Mario's got like hops. He's very skilled. Mario technically does have all four elements from power-ups. Yeah, it's true. Fire flower, he's got the wings. He's an adult too. The mushroom. And then what's the other one? Water. He's got the frog suit. <laughs> yeah, and he's an adult too, so he's got the experience. Aang's like a hundred something years old. <laughs> no, he's not. Well, technically, <laughs> but he was frozen in time for a hundred years, so. Danny Phantom or Timmy Turner? Can Timmy Turner use his godparents? Yeah, he has them. Use what you got. Well then, checkmate Timmy. <laughs> and it's not a fair fight. Danny's can go invisible. It's going to be a tough to hit him. Sonic or Crash Bandicoot? We want Sonic. Crash doesn't really have any powers. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going to be tough to keep up. Plankton or the Ice King? The Ice King. <laughs> He's going to accidentally step on Plankton, and that's it. But Plankton's an evil genius. Is he that much of a genius if he still can't steal the Krabby Patty formula? Uh, I don't know. I'd take evil genius over evil. <laughs> Ice King's just stupid evil. And finally, Grim or Samurai Jack? Well, Grim's already dead, so you can't really do anything more to him. <laughs> so I'm going Grim. Yeah, but Samurai Jack's known for beating these giant evil monsters. I'm sure you can handle Grim. Grim's on a whole another level. My boy Cheap Cheap gets no love. I don't know, he had a funny moment in the movie when he hits Mario in the face. But he's not even playable in any of the games. Even Blooper, Goomba, Koopa, 
They're all playable in these Mario parties and these Mario Karts. You're wrong. You can be cheap cheap in Super Mario Odyssey when you throw the hat on him. Oh, that's a cheap move. You're still cheap cheap. You're not really cheap cheap. You're Mario as cheap cheap. Still a cheap cheap. But there is one game where cheap cheap is playable. And I'm not talking as a partner in Paper Mario. He's the main character. What game is that? It's not even a Mario game. It's Flappy Bird. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Cheap Cheap is the main character of Flappy Bird. I wonder if that inspired the design. It definitely did. They took the actual design of Cheap Cheap and then scaled it down so they wouldn't have copyright issues. I mean, look at the background. It's Mushroom Kingdom, and they even have pipes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's based off of Mario, wow. and Cheap Cheap is Flappy Bird. I totally see it now. Yep. Okay. Guess these characters' favorite foods. I'm ready. Mario. Definitely not mushrooms. I know that. <laughs> I'm going to go pasta. Yep. Spaghetti. Save the spaghetti! Save the spaghetti! Sonic. Oh, the chili dogs, of course. Yep. Crash Bandicoot. Does he have a favorite food? Yep. Technically not of this world, though. Oh, it's like what they use as coins. It's that... The... The fruit thing. The berry. The Wumpa fruit. <laughs> yeah, that thing. Yeah. Mikey from the Ninja Turtles. Oh, well, they all love pizza, so it's got to be pizza. But what's Mikey's favorite piece of pizza? He strikes me as a basic kind of guy. I'll go cheese. No. Ah. He has two different routes for pizza, but the main one, the main ingredients is always pepperoni. Mikey's a pepperoni guy. SpongeBob. It's got to be a Krabby Patty, right? <laughs> of course, the Krabby Patty. Uncle Iroh. He has a favorite food? Yeah, and favorite drink, you can guess either. He seems like a soup kind of guy. Nope. Favorite drink? Tea. Well, yeah. Favorite food? Roast duck. That's out of nowhere. <laughs> He's an old man. He's got that exquisite taste. The narrator of SpongeBob is the most evil man of all time. He seems pretty innocent to me. But did you know that he is the Cyclops in the Spongebob movie? <laughs> he is? He's the one who kidnaps Spongebob and Patrick. And brings them up out of the water. To Shell City. Because they both have that scuba suit that's almost identical. And the narrator knows every move that's going on because he's got cameras filming it. Right, he knew just the right moment to capture them right before they were about to get squished by Dennis's big boot. And he even puts them out to dry, remember? <laughs> Yeah, that was sad. He tortures them to near death just for an emotional moment for his movie. The goofy goober tear, I remember that. Yeah. And when they get brought back to life, he kind of just lets them go so that he can continue with the movie. But he, enforcing that kind of level of torture just to make a good movie is crazy. He's committed to the bit. He must be a psychopath, though, to have that kind of, like, voice lazy natural voice <laughs> and then do these crazy crimes but i have something that takes that theory to the next level spongebob is actually an underwater version of the truman show like he's being watched at all times exactly everyone around him is a paid actor for the show spongebob squarepants what makes you say that bikini bottom is in the middle of nowhere on the ocean floor it's just a set-up city. It's With a nothing set. around it. Exactly. It's a set. And Old Man Jenkins, you know, <laughs> Old Man Jenkins? Yeah, yeah. He's been played by over four different fish throughout the series, which means that the original actor must have died, and he keeps getting recasted each time they need an old man in a scene. Yeah, because there's no reason they can't just draw the same Old Man Jenkins. And then in the episode Gone, everyone leaves Bikini Bottom but SpongeBob. And that's because the whole cast got a day off from filming. And then they come back all on the same bus. And they just claim that it's National No Spongebob Day. And try to play it off. It was really just vacation. Spongebob's being played as a fool for everyone else's entertainment. That explains why Patrick's actually a secret genius. <laughs> yeah. And Mr. Krabs has those secret cameras up in one of those rooms in his Krusty Krab. And Sandy's always in contact with the narrator. They're keeping an eye on Spongebob at all times. Toying with his every emotion. <laughs> Would you let these Mario characters date your daughter? Oh, boy. Mario. Of course, he's a gentleman. Is he too much of a gentleman, though? 
I feel like he's no overcompensating. Such thing. No such thing as too much of a gentleman. Why Luigi? Absolutely not. <laughs> no? You don't think he's got ultimate riz? He's too devious. Luigi. Yeah, I'd go Luigi. He's got a real jealous face, though, when he gets angry. You've seen him driving that cart by. That just means he's protective. Toad. No, he's too immature. You're not going to give Toad a chance? No, not yet. Not yet. Come on. <laughs> Wario. Yeah, I'll say yes. No, come on. That dude's rich. <laughs> All he cares about is coins, coins, coins. So if my daughter gets in that family, that means I'm set for life. Bro, Thanksgiving dinner? <laughs> it's going to be stinking up the joint. <laughs> I don't want that. Peach. No. Peach wants all the attention for herself. I don't think she's going to give much uh, care and affection to others. Look how she treats Mario. Look how she treats Bowser. Yeah, but if my daughter's able to catch Princess Peach, hey, then you're set for life. Royalty in Bowser. Yeah, I'm going yes. Oh, God, no. Look at the love song he made for Peach. He literally wanted to rule the world for Peach's love. It's the ultimate sim. <laughs> if he has that much love to give, why not just receive it? Can't have that mindset. Did you know Daphne from Scooby-Doo and Ed from Ed, Ed and Eddie actually went on a date? My mind can't compute that information. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> there was a short episode that aired very briefly. It was like 30 seconds to a minute long on Cartoon Network. And it was a crossover called Toon Date. And Ed and Daphne go on a date. What in the world? <laughs> yep. They go into a drive through the first thing. And Daphne's like three times the size of Ed. <laughs> well, well, keep in mind, Ed's a child. <laughs> yeah, so this is a little weird. <laughs> they go through a drive through and Ed's just got coupons. <laughs> he pays everyone with just coupons. Thrifty. And towards the end, there's like this joke, like hidden joke, <laughs> where uh, Daphne's talking to Ed and, and goes, I love Double D so much. <laughs> I love Double D. <laughs> I always forgot that that name just had that extra meaning to it until I watched that back. There's a lot of layers behind our childhood cartoons <laughs> that you don't catch until you watch it back. It's because the adults made the show. Right. I've been sitting on this take for a while. You know how back in the day, weekends felt forever as a kid, and now weekends go by in a heartbeat? Yeah, the classic time moves faster as you age. Exactly. We experience time differently as we grow older, and it's because it becomes a smaller and smaller percentage of our lives. So let's say for the sake of argument, as a five-year-old, that's when you gain consciousness. Yeah. When you're 10 years old, one year is 20% of your life. And then if you're 25 years old, one year is 5% of your life, which means that time moves four times slower as a 10-year-old compared to a 25-year-old. Yeah, I really thought of it like that, yeah. So an adult goes through time faster than a child. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> It'll be dead in a day. Time's going to go faster and faster and faster the older and older and older we get. Damn. That's why summer as a kid felt like years. Summer now, maybe a week, and pretty soon that's how years are going to feel. I mean, we built an entire YouTube channel in a year. <laughs> Squidward is the greatest artist who ever lived. Oh, please. He is. There's an episode where he became a, an art teacher. Yeah, I remember that. SpongeBob was the only one who shows up for the, <laughs> for the school. And when Squidward tries to teach SpongeBob art, if you can remember, SpongeBob was actually the artist. He created the real statues, the Greek amazing statues. Yeah, and I remember he drew a perfect circle. While Squidward just created rubbish. <laughs> it was horrible. But after ruining SpongeBob's art statue, Squidward makes his own in complete anger. He starts smashing up everything because he can't create he can't recreate an amazing statue. But at the end, he finally does it. He pulls it off. He creates the greatest statue of all time. But he never looks at it. It's only when Squidward looks at something it becomes bad. He, he doesn't have the right vision, but he has the skills to create amazing art. I don't know. I saw that that Squidward picture, that self-portrait he drew. <laughs> Didn't look too great to me. That's iconic. <laughs> it's like the Mona Lisa of cartoons. And I have reason to believe that Squidward might have created Painty the Pirate. Who? 
The pirate at the opening of SpongeBob that talks. Patchy? Not patchy, painty. The painting. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. That painting's a mystery. It's a talking painting. The only person who create who could create a talking painting would be the greatest artist of all time. And that's Squidward Tentacles. Listen, SpongeBob may have been an art prodigy in that one episode, but he's got nothing on the science prodigy. Who's that? Jimmy Neutron? Nope. I'm talking Phineas from Phineas and Ferb. Oh, please. Phineas is the son of Dr. Doofenshmirtz. Who? <laughs> the evil scientist in Phineas and Ferb. Oh, 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 yeah. So Ferb, his head shape is the exact shape as his dad. And Phineas, his head shape doesn't match his dad or his mom. But you know who it matches? Who? Dr. Doofenshmirtz. Because that's his biological father. They're both geniuses. Phineas is creating all these crazy inventions like roller coasters. They're going to the moon. They're doing everything. And Dr. Doofenshmirtz, he's making all these evil inventions because he's the evil scientist. They're both smart, creative masterminds. And the character that ties them together is Perry the Platypus. Perry? Yeah. <laughs> What's going on with Perry? There is a reason why he's Phineas's pet. It's because Perry knows the truth. And he's trying to prevent Dr. Doofenshmirtz from finding out that he has a son. Because if Doofenshmirtz finds out that Phineas is out there, he's going to mold his mind and make him the next supervillain. Yeah, Phineas is too pure of heart for that. I don't know. He's a bit of a sociopath. He has no care for the damage he causes with his inventions. Yeah, that's true. And he brushes off Isabella all the time when she shows him any affection. Perry is always spying on him. Yeah, so I think... Perry's keeping an eye out for the greater good. Have you seen the new Puss in Boots movie yet? Yeah, that was fire. Yeah, I was shocked. It was that good. You know, a lot of people forget Puss in Boots started out as a bad guy in Shrek. Oh yeah, he was like the wanted man. He's got a dark past. In fact, did you ever wonder why you never see any other ogres in Far Far Away? It's just Shrek. Yeah, that's true. It's because Puss in Boots killed them all. What? <laughs> I'm serious. For what reason? Puss in his other lives was a paid assassin. And when the king is looking for someone to get rid of Shrek, the ugly stepsister says there's only one guy for a job like that. And it's Puss in Boots. Because he built a reputation as a paid assassin by slaying the ogres of far, far away. And that's why he was sent out after Shrek. And if he didn't kill all of them, he at least killed enough to scare off the rest of the ogres. How come he couldn't kill Shrek? Shrek is too pure of a heart. He's not like all the other ogres. Everyone misjudges him, but he's like an onion. You peel back the layers. And there's some good in there. 